everybody for joining us here to celebrate International Nurses Day. This is an event that we're running with AAG and delighted to host here at Warrigal, uh, talking about international nurses leading Australian aged care. As always, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners and custodians of the land on which we stand and live and work and thrive. And here in Canberra, that's the Ngunnawal people. <clears throat> um, here at Ghana, we've really tried to um, include the First Nations wisdom in the work that we do. Um, and I'd like to really acknowledge Crystal's artwork, um, which she painted for Ghana. And she talks about the ripples that we have as an effect of our nursing work on the communities that we work in. Uh, and as well as the ripple effect from older people to younger people, older people into families, older people into the community. Um, and I just keep finding so much resonance in this word about ripples and about Yulang, which is the name of the painting. Um, we've been doing some work with students um, and in residential aged care, and I, I just keep hearing the cycling back of, of the, the work that we're trying to do to promote gerontological nursing, and, and that makes me very excited for the uh, quality of care that we'll be able to deliver into the future. Um, so as we go forward today, please be aware that we may cover different kinds of topics. Nursing's pretty full frontal work, um, and so please uh, acknowledge and treat that as, as you may need to to cope. <clears throat> um, I'm going to spend the first few minutes with you today. This is a bit of an outline, and then I'm going to be handing over to the wonderful Professor Helen Rawson, uh, recently crowned, shall we say. <laughs> Um, we have some fantastic speakers, um, nurses internationally born or qualified, who are going to be talking about their experiences of leading aged care here in Australia. And we also have the wonderful Kevin Jones. He's going to add some perspectives later on in the session as well. Kevin's here with me at Warrigal. Um, towards the end, we will have a bit of a panel session, so please collect any questions or comments that you may have. You can pop them into the chat as you go. I can never remember my good ideas unless I write them down, so please feel free to write them down as you go into the chat bar. Um, and we would really like, as always, in these Ghana events to have that inclusivity and, and hear what's happening for you where you are uh, and what's important as we go forward and, and, and really what you want to hear from the audience as well of beautiful experts that we have today. Um, and then at the end, Vicky Trainer will do um, the closing and a little bit of a summary um, and always providing her usual valuable insights. So we'll be together till about 3.30 if you can stay with us for that long. So International Nurses Day, you may or may not know, is celebrated on Florence Nightingale's birthday, the 12th of May every year. So that's this Sunday. And the theme this year is Our Nurses, Our Future, which is talking about the economic power of care. Um, and this was particularly uh, revealed, I guess, through the COVID situation about the real impact, if we didn't already know, that nurses have on our communities. Um, and so what we wanted to do with Ghana was highlight the vital contribution of our, of our overseas born or trained nurses in delivering high quality care in Australia. And we'll be talking about this from a number of professional colleagues and talking about both the, the professional development uh, and the career progression, um, as well as any kind of daily experiences, day-to-day -day work, to give a sense to other people who might be thinking about doing this kind of work or, or furthering their careers. <clears throat> I'm particularly about the impact upon the systems. We know that nurses are leaders in change and policy as well as practice. Um, and I always can't wait to hear more about what the nurses are doing. Um, I'm just going to spend a little bit of time talking a little bit about Ghana, but also just a little bit about background. Um, you may or may not be aware that 14% of the nursing population work in aged care. So when we do our registrations every year, we talk, need to um, highlight what's our key area of work. And aged care is the largest population of nurses. The next most uh, popular response is medical. So medical wards and hospitals, and that's at 10%. So really we are a predominant population. 17% um, of nurses talk about being interested in a career in older person nursing. And so you can see that's actually enough. If we can keep them, that can keep us growing. Okay. So I think sometimes some, we feel that there aren't enough coming through in the next generation. And um, I think that it's more about making sure that we're creating um, quality thriving environments for those nurses to stay in. Aged care and the care industry is the fastest growing economy in Australia. Uh, and the care economy is the third largest economy in Australia. There's about 200,000 people in residential aged care, about 50% of those have some kind of dementia, um, but most people with dementia, it's really important to remember, live in the community about 80 or 90%. And so hospital avoidance, improved quality of life, improved maintenance of function and cognition, as well as improvement of function and cognition, are all key cost savings that nurses provide or contribute to. 
Um, but we really do need better data to understand and research that impact of nursing on resident outcomes, as well as on person-centred outcomes as well. We know that there's cost savings in terms of morbidity and mortality when we have higher ratios of registered nurses in hospitals, but we actually don't have the same kind of robust data on residential aged care that we need to be able to demonstrate. Um, we also know there's opportunities in terms of economic power through improved efficiencies, and I would suggest that that's through better information use, information technology use, because that's often where the waste of resources is, waste of nursing work can be. Um, so many of you will know this, but just in case you're new to Ghana, we are enabling access to gerontological nursing knowledge and skills and providing community of specialist nurses. Um, and today I was delighted to hear how Shajana really talked about how meaningful that is. We've been having a, an International Nurses Day of lunches and celebrations here at Warrigal um, about how much that community uh, means to her and, and, and how proud she is to be part of it. And every time I hear that, I think that's part of that ripple effect that, that Ghana is having. We talk a lot, and you may have seen this before, about this pathway, about recognising the specialisation and through the different kinds of approaches. You might be using the Gerontological Nursing Competencies Program or other kinds of approaches towards specialisation in aged care. Mine was through my PhD, if you like, as well as through um, generalist medical ward nursing and palliative care nursing. But everybody's is different. There are multiple ways to become a gerontological nurse. This is some work that we've been doing with the Clinical Placement with Older People program. And I'm sorry the writing is tiny, but it's kind of intentional because it's showing the richness of the kinds of skills and knowledge that specialty gerontological nurses are. And I'm happy to share this with you if you want to email me because you can't read it. Um, and so this is the work that we have been funded by the Commonwealth to do is the Clinical Placements with Older People, which is increasing the quality and quantity of older person placements with nursing students, again, promoting that pipeline um, of nurses into aged care and into gerontological nursing. The membership of Ghana is large, and this is last year's data because in our transition to membership being managed by AAG, uh, we don't actually have numbers at the moment while we're doing our transition, um, but you can see that we are growing and we are very grateful to Warrigal and Opal who have been really uh, strong leaders in supporting their staff to be members and we hope that more uh, organisations might uh, join that approach. And you will see that on our website, we do have our founding members, um, which we're very proud of. Um, and one of our other latest updates is really doing this transition to the AAG, um, which will also update our communities of practice. These are our areas of inquiry um, for communities of practice that we have established last year. Um, and these are some of the names of people who are involved. And again, I'm just flicking through so you get a bit of an idea. Um, but really in these communities of practice, people really wanted to be staying together because a lot of the gerontological nursing isn't about further specialisation, but that crossover of all those different interests and how they work and how you can then serve the individuals that you're caring for. Um, we did contribute to the National Nursing Workforce Strategy, um, a specific Ghana submission, and we were really proud to be able to do that. And thank you to everybody, all of the Ghana members who contributed to that, to make that a strong messaging to the Commonwealth who are looking at workforce reform in the nursing space. And we were also able to contribute to a joint submission. So with the Council of Deans, the College of Nurses, the ACNP, Krana and APNA as well. Um, so it's really exciting to see Ghana being up there with these other professional bodies, many of which have been around for 10, 20, 30, years or more. Um, I think the ACN reached up to 60 years or something, didn't they? So um, we are a fledgling little organisation, um, but punching above our weight. Um, and just to lead into the topic today, there is, of course, lots of data about the international nurses who are working in residential aged care, but most of them will still say that it's about 30% um, and that I'm I find it hard to get a good representation uh, of the population working in the space. Um, and so here we've got our gerontological nursing participants uh, where we had 294 participants. So it's a nice broad spread. These are nurses who are working in aged care and are being supported with a mentoring program to increase their gerontological leadership skills. I um, mean, you can see there at the bottom that 76% are, um, are cold populations, so culturally and linguistically diverse, about 80%, and, and that seems to mirror more what I'm seeing in, in the space. Um, and so this is something that we really recognised um, both through needing Commonwealth recognition, appropriate visa pathways, um, as well as the different kinds of working supports in the, in the workplace, as, as that these are the leaders of the space, and so therefore they should be on the stage and talking about their work.